Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're gonna figure out what the square root of 12 is equal to without the aid of a calculator. Now, it is important that you know how to use your calculator to find uh, the square roots of numbers or the cube roots of numbers, but that's a separate discussion here. This problem is really more of a problem like this. Let's say I gave you the fraction 30 over 50, and I said, uh, can you write this fraction in a simpler way? Okay, uh, hopefully you say, oh yeah, we can just reduce this and this is equal to the fraction uh, three-fifths and you would be correct. So in mathematics, it's always, it's not even really like an optional thing. Uh, you should always uh, simplify any kind of value of a number or an algebraic expression that you may have, okay? And effectively, that's what we're doing here. We're going to be simplifying the square root of 12. We're not going to be looking for a decimal approximation. We're just going to write this in a simpler way. Now, if you are taking any sort of algebra course, uh, you should know how to do this. But if you forgot, don't worry, I'm going to show you exactly what to do. But if you can figure out the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, I'm going to talk about a very important property of square roots. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description of this video. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so what is the square root of 12? What is a simpler way to write this? Well, this, this uh, answer to this particular question is, let's go ahead and take a look at it right now. The square root of 12 is equal to two times the square root of three. Okay, so this is the correct answer. Hopefully you, uh, you, um, you know, got this right. But if you didn't get this right, you're gonna see how easy it is to do this problem. But for those of you that did get this right, let's give you a nice big happy face and A plus, A 100%. And a few stars so you can tell your friends and family that you know exactly how to simplify a square root or radical. Now in mathematics, this um, symbol right here is, uh, most people would say, oh, that's a square root symbol, but technically uh, this is called a radical symbol. So for those of you that are studying like algebra and you're like, hey, where do I look at, uh, where do I learn about, you know, uh, what I'm talking about here? Well, you would look in your textbook or course or whatnot under a chapter or unit uh, refer to probably something like radical expressions, equations, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, unless you're taking a real basic kind of uh, course where they might just be focusing only on square roots. But again, in mathematics, this is referred to as a radical. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this problem now. So the square root of 12, what is that equal to? Well, the only way we could figure this problem out is to use a property of square roots or property of radicals. And this is the one that we're going to be using right here. So namely, what this is saying, you know, this is kind of looks kind of fancy, but this is not that difficult. What this is saying that the square root of a value, a number, okay, if we think of that number in terms of its factors, we can separate, we have one big square root, in other words, if I had the square root of uh, 3 times 7, okay, this is, would be like our A times B. This is uh, the factors of two numbers. In this case, 3 times 7 is 21, right? So I can think of 21 as 3 times 7. So, of course, I'm going to talk about 12 here in a second. But A times B are just factors of numbers, okay? A fa uh, any factors that you want, and it can be more than two. But the, big, the main idea here is that you can pull apart the factors under their own individual square roots, okay? So in this case, it would be like the square root of three times the square root of seven, or we can write that as a square root of three times seven. Okay, so let's go ahead and use this uh, property uh, to simplify this. Now, here is where uh, some of you might be saying, okay, if I'm thinking about the square root of 12, all right, we just write this this way, you're thinking about, all right, what are factors of 12? Okay, now hopefully you know what a factor is. It's basically two numbers that when you multiply them together, two or more numbers, uh, when you multiply them together, you get back to 12. So like one times 12, uh, six times two gets back to 12, and four times three. So all of these are pairs of factors, okay? So let's take a look at this first setup here. 
And what I'm doing is just simply following this property of square roots. So the square root of 12, I can write that as the square root of, it, of some factors of 12. So six times two, right? Because six times two is in fact 12. So the square root of six times two is equal to, now here I can pull these apart into their own little individual square roots. Okay, so this would be equal to the square root of six times the square root of two. Okay, so this is technically correct. There's nothing wrong with this, but this isn't really helping us out. Okay, we're like, well, you know, do I would I just write the answer this way? Well, this is not really going to simplify, help us simplify the square root of 12. Okay, so what you want to do is look for other type of uh, factors. And I'm going to talk about those here in just one second. So let's take a look at this one. So we know the square root of 12 is also equal to the square root of four times three. Okay, so let's take a look at these factors. And when we use the factor four, okay, four times three, and we break this up into their own individual square roots here, the square root of four times the square root of three, well, in this case, we really like this setup right here because the square root of four is what? Well, of course, that is two. Okay, so we're like, oh, okay, I could simplify this number because I know what the square root of four is, that's two. So when you're looking to simplify square roots, you want to um, look for things called perfect squared factors. Okay, so when you're thinking of factors of numbers, you want to look for uh, numbers like this, the square root of four. Okay, well, actually, let's just list the factors. Uh, four, okay, nine. 16, 25, you could just go on and on and on, 36. Because if any of these are factors, like right here we have four, we could take the square root of that number, and of course that's two. Like nine, I could take the square root of nine, that's three. 16, take the square root of that, that's gonna be four. So these numbers, four, nine, 16, 25, on and on and on, these are called perfect square factors. You wanna be on the lookout for those type of factors. Six and two are not perfect square factors. So although this is technically correct, it's really not helping us out. So this scenario though is uh, what we want. They're like, oh, we got a perfect square factor right here. So the square root of four times the square root of three, uh, that is equal to the square root of 12. So let's go ahead and finish up the problem. So the square root of 12 is equal to the square root of four times three, which of course is equal to the square root of four uh, times the square root of three and the square root of four, which of course is two. So that'd be two times the square root of three. So the square root of 12 is equal to two times the square root of three. Now, somebody might be saying, well, you know, I, this doesn't look any, you know, this doesn't look any more simpler than this. Well, in algebra, it is simpler, okay? And not only is it simpler, it's required, okay? In other words, if you're taking any sort of algebra course, your teacher is going to expect you to do that. If you do not do that, and you're like, yeah, I'll just leave my answer the way I want. I'm telling you right now, you're not going to like some of your, um, you know, your test results. If you left your answer, for example, if you were taking a quiz or a test on square roots, and you left your answer like, yeah, I'm just gonna leave my answer like this, well, your teacher will take off some points, maybe like minus three, and then you'll end up looking like this. You'll be like, man, I should have listened to that guy on YouTube, whatever his name is, that YouTube math man. Oh yeah, it's John from TC Math Academy. Listen, everything I'm telling you is important. I've been teaching math for decades. And so when I make my little videos here, I really am trying to stress very, very important concepts about mathematics and algebra. So if you are taking any one of these kind of courses, whether it be you know, pre-algebra, algebra one, algebra two, it doesn't make a difference. You wanna do math correctly because if you take shortcuts, you know, it's, that's just not the way to learn math. Again, if you need help with this or additional help, I would check out like my, um, uh, you could check out my pre-algebra course, but probably uh, my algebra one course would be more appropriate because I really get heavy duty into radical expressions, radical equations, etc., etc. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.